Guys, I haven't made a train demo video ever, I don't think. I've made ceiling fan, you know, smoke alarms and portable fans and everything like that, but I've never made a train demo. And I have not made a train video, period, in a very long time. So it's definitely overdue. But this is something I picked up today at the York TCA train meet at the York Fairground, which is held every April and October. And I usually go to the October ones because that gets me ready for Christmas time, gets me all gets me all pumped for Christmas. Uh Christmas trains and everything, so really look forward to it every year. I don't normally go to the April ones. I mean I've been before, but I don't really usually go. Anyway, uh, this is, as you can see, is a Lionel NW2 diesel switcher. It's a very special one that I've wanted for a very long time, and I finally have it. Um, it's the Santa Fe ATNSF number 6220 diesel switcher. Um, and this is a classic. This is part of Lionel's post-war uh, post series. Um, it's a classic, it's very well known, and I love it so much. I'm very glad to have one. Bought it for $80, and that is a quite a discount because most of the other ones I saw there were like $100, over like $190, almost $200. Um, this one was so deeply discounted because the person was getting ready, like was packing up as I was buying this. He already had a sign on his table that said everything is 50% off, and he did not notice it at the time he was marking prices, but there is a very large crack right there on the side of the shell, as you can see. Probably going to have to glue that. I mean, I'm obviously going to glue it, but I'm probably going to use that compound, that joint compound that I got. Or not joint compound. Uh, it's like crack compound or something. It's not a glue. It's like you use a UV light to cure it. It's really cool. I'll probably use that, probably fix that soon. Um, anyway, these switchers, they're, they're classic, as I said. Um, they were used as models after Lionel's later modern era switchers, such as this, the Western Maryland, uh, which is, uh, this is my Western Maryland 8501, and this is one of my all-time favorite engines. I love it. Uh, and these were modeled after those. So, yeah, and you can definitely see the resemblance. I mean, basically the only thing that's different is the uh, color. And, the, of course, the road name. Um, anyway, these switchers are special because they featured some upgrades that Lionel had made. Well, not really upgrades, but more like extra luxuries. They feature Lionel's special magnet traction where the drive wheels, in, ca in this case the back wheels, are magnetically attracted to the iron rails. Now of course this wouldn't really have any effect on like other rails such as MTH's brass or copper. I don't even know if copper is magnetic or not, but you get the idea. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work on non-ferrous tracks. It really only works on Lionel tubular track, and I don't know about fast tracks, but it definitely it doesn't work on MTH real tracks. I know that. Um, it probably does work on fast tracks. I don't know. Um, anyway, um, and another thing I found interesting is that this is the this was used as a test engine for magnet traction. So that means this was the very first engine that Lionel ever made that used magnet traction. And I actually saw that in somebody else's video. Uh, but this one, it also features Lionel's, uh, it features a, a, something different that Lionel did. It features their uh, automatic ringing bell sound. It's a mechanical bell mechanism that's triggered by the front wheels. And how it works is there's a bell and a hammer and a little disc that spins as the wheels rotate with little dots and those raised dots that trigger cams which make the hammer go. 
Okay, it's really hard to describe how the bell mechanism works, so this is the inside of my Western Maryland switcher, which also has the bell, bell, the ringing bell sound mechanism. You can see right here is the little bell, it's like a little gong. As you can see when I hit it, it makes a noise. Right here is the hammer, as you can see it's spring-loaded, so when I push it up and let it go, it strikes the bell. And right down there you can see the disc with the raised dots, there's one of the raised dots, there's another raised dot as well. And when I turn the wheel you can see that the disc rotates and the raised dot should be right underneath the cam. This is the cam and there's another cam right here. This is one of these cam, one of them is for forward and the other one is for reverse. So as I turn the wheel, you should see, oop, I'm turning it the wrong way. You see the bell hammer is going up and then it releases and there's the raised dot that just did that. So it's an ingenious little mechanism of course, after a while, it, get, it got a little bit annoying, so a lot of people disconnected the bells back in the day, so it's pretty hard to find ones that still have their bells intact. In fact, there were two that were like $50 at the meet today that were like, that, that they, they had everything worked, but the bell was missing. But I, but I didn't get them. Anyway, um, this model features a reversing unit of course a very simple electromechanical or electromagnetic reversing unit electromechanical not electromechanical but uh, here's the reversing unit right here there's the coil is up in there you can sort of see it up there and there's the little finger that p turns the drum which is right there you just saw it go back in that was the finger and right on the other side is the reversing unit lever which turns it on and off as you can see there's off this is on very simple to operate there's the reversing unit once again here's the here, here's a better view but this right here that i'm touching that i'm moving is the finger so that right there is the finger and there's the drum right there you can see it turns around like that so the magnetic coil pulls the finger up which rotates the drum. So that's how it works. It's very simple, yet very effective. Of course, it's probably a lot more durable than the electronic reversing units of today. Um, so, this engine also has electromagnetic couplers, and I'm not quite sure how those work. I'm still trying to figure it out, and I haven't really figured it out yet, but I, I definitely will. So, uh, let's take a look at some cab decorations now. It has wire handrails all over the thing, which is very, uh, that's a very, uh, a typical design of this era, wire handrails on everything. You can see there's back railings, front railings, side railings here and here, and then there's railings on the back of the cab, and then there's side rails on the side. and that was replicated in the later ones, as I had mentioned. The Western Maryland, as you can see, has those same side rails, and everything else is basically exactly the same. And that was a very, a very uh, important detail in these that they replicated the side, the handrails, uh, because most of the, at, at that time they were making the switchers were stamped out of sheet metal, and so the railings on either side were sheet metal railings. They were just stamped and the, they had no side railings or no railings on the back of the cab and they just had, it was the rails on the side of the cab were molded plastic as part of the cab, so this definitely looks a lot nicer and a lot more authentic than those. So, there's also, in the front here, there's two marker lights, as you can see, right here and right here, and then a headlight lens in the front, and it's illuminated by a small little bul light bulb in there. And on the back, the entire cabin is lit by means of one of those exact same bulbs, and you can see another uh, lens right there on the top. There's also a radio antenna right here, which is the pointy part on top of the wheel is actually broken off, 
but it doesn't look too bad. I think I might get a spare maybe next time at the next show because that's what it's supposed to look like. See the thing sticking up? That's broken. I've also got a little bell right here. It's black. Matches the radio antenna. Um, and two, two stacks, as you can see, and a little horn as well on top of the windows for the cabin. Um, and then right over here you can see it says Built by Lionel and right under that is a GM logo. There's no GM on the front. I think some of them had GM on them. or I, I don't know if they did or not. But this was one of the variations that had GM as a small watermark on the bottom. Or water, lo water, watermark, I think, yeah, that's what it is, a watermark logo. There's another one that had a big watermark logo. I don't really know what those look like, but they were definitely a little bit different. So this is a different variation. So, I think... Now you probably want to see this thing run. So, I've got it on the track. Let's go ahead and turn it on. I don't know which direction it's going to start in. Oh wow, it's starting in forward. I have the best luck. Okay, so you can see the light in the back. You can hear the bell ringing. Okay, now let's switch the direction. That's neutral. Put it in reverse. Okay, I'll switch it back to forward. There's neutral again, and back to forward it goes. It's going a little slow. Let's turn it up a little bit. Step back, let me watch it. Oops, what happened? Must have accidentally lost power for a split second, which made the reversing unit trip. Okay. There it goes. All right. All right, now I just grab some cars, and you'll get to see it pull a couple of cars. Now, this isn't a real train because, I mean, I didn't really have room for caboose, so I only grabbed four cars. Two passenger cars, a reefer, and a tank car. That's really all I had room for on this little track circle. So, let's start it up.
All right. Well, there you have it. That's my Lionel Santa Fe MW2 diesel switcher. Thanks for watching.